All right, people. We're back to the KCCR. Now, I realize uh, I may have missed a Wednesday there where I didn't get anything out to you guys. I am sorry for that. I have no defense. I just missed it. That being said, we're going to get back on schedule. My bad. Uh, so today, we're going to be looking over Dungeons of Dreadmoor. Uh, Conquest of the Wizardlands. This is not necessarily just Conquest of the Wizardlands. That's just the load screen that was there. And I believe this is the initial load screen for the game. This is a, uh... Man, I don't know where to begin. Uh... I want to say it's a roguelike-esque, uh... Dungeon-type game. Upon which you create a character and you head right into it. And you try to get through as many floors as you can without dying. Uh, we'll get right into it. As I said, right here, you click this button. And if you have other expansions, uh... I believe there's Realm of the Diggle Gods. You have to name the expansion. Conquest of the Wizardlands, and then the base game. Now, just change the loading screen. That doesn't dictate what game you're playing. Also, before we continue on, I would like to stress that I am aware that this game's volume is rather loud. I turned it down as much as I could, so hopefully my audio from my microphone is going through fine. If not, then you won't see this, as always, is my thing. So we're just going to hit new game here. You're brought to, uh, this is your game options in terms of, like, gameplay options. You actually have a screen, which you didn't see, that is pretty much right before that. You could call it a launcher screen, if you will, where you change your audios, your sound effects, music. You can change your resolution, which can go all the way up to 4, uh, 900, which is what I have. Or you can have your 1280, 720p, and all that good jazz. You also have a few things like a colorblind option, which I admittedly don't know much about, and... Some other little shit like that. Not too, not, not anything worth showing you in this video. All right, this is your difficulties and a bunch of options. All right, so elves just want to have fun, which is easy, medium, and hard, really. Then you've got your permadeath option, which, you know, typical for a roguelike, I guess. No time to grind, which is just, as the description says, smaller floor, same experience. It's pretty much exactly that. You have less on each floor, but you have the same amount of experience. I guess you could say more monsters. I'm not too sure what the difference is there, as I don't use it. And then Realm of the Diggle Gods, which is just an expansion, which I believe increases the amount of floors that you have to go down and adds new creatures. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just leave it on Dorvish moderation, and uh, I'm going to take... It really won't matter, but for this sake, we're going to go ahead and take no permanent just to show you, because that explains itself. So next, this is the creation aspect of this. Now, there's a lot of skills. These are all skills you can have. Seven. Uh, this is it. I believe these are added... Oh, man, I don't remember which or which. I believe everything from here down... Wait... Yeah, I'm pretty sure everything from here down, or maybe it was here down, I'm not sure, are expansion-based skills, so... I could go over every single one of them, but I won't, as you guys can do that by purchasing the game yourselves. But I will explain some stuff that... because I'm gonna have to go in the game to show you the skills anyways. So I usually play a mage character when I play this, which means Promethean Magic is something you're going to want if you intend to be a mage, as this is the hardest-hitting spell spell choice in the game with some of the best magical abilities tied to it. Now, let's see, what else would you want for a magical character? Well, I always choose Blood Mage, which is you regain magic points by killing things. Every time you kill something, you regain some mana. I'm okay with that. Uh, let's see. Laywalker's pretty good, but we're gonna get Perception, which is allows you to see traps and other such nonsense like that. It's pretty good uh, if you think you'll be leveling a lot up. Another good thing is Artful Dodger, as that self-explanatory adds a lot of nice abilities to avoid damage, and I believe there's some counterattack based things in there. Uh, I know Vampirism sounds sexy, but for this type of build, we're not gonna use that. Uh, we're gonna use uh, Burglary because I believe rank 2 of Burglary allows you to lockpick any door without risking the pick breaking. So it'll pretty much allow you access to all secret rooms. Um, let's see here, we've got two more skills. We don't really need offensive anything because of Promethean Magic. I already took Artful Dodger. Uh, let's go ahead and take... Laywalker's pretty good for refilling your mana if you come across the situation where you run out of mana, that is. Um, I feel like there was another optimal skill, but I, for the life of me, cannot remember. Oh, yeah, magic training. 
which increases your ability to do magic damage if you put points into it. You could also sacrifice that and get like fungal arts, which allows you to pick mushrooms, or wand lore, which increases wand damage, amongst other things like that. But okay, so we'll hit next. These are your skills. You can also random and last. Last is let's say you start a new game or you died and you don't have permadeath on. You just click that and it will choose the last skills you started the game with. So next. This is where you choose if you want to be male or female. Uh, I'm a dude, so whatever. Kara, we'll hit next. This is your story. Uh, in ages long past, great heroes bound the dark, uh, the dark lord dread more in the depths of the earth, and his, uh, and that his evil world trouble the land never more. What the hell is this choice of words? Alas, the foul lich dread more proved most devious and patient, for he has been loosening his magical bonds, slowly freeing himself to again spread his evil in the world of the light. He must be stopped again. Yada yada. I realize I fucked that up. Jesus Christ. Um, so we'll hit next. And this is a. <clears throat> Come on, game. There we go. Now let's go ahead and explain some stuff here. This is a roguelike game, which pretty much means that if you have not, if you cannot see around a corner, you cannot see around a corner. But if you can, you can. See? At the same time, it also means enemies do not move in their squares unless you move. So if you're just standing here, and I believe spacebar counts as a... Maybe it wasn't spacebar. I think it's spacebar. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, won't move unless you do. So, as you can see, I only have one skill because the rest I started with were pretty much passive. So in order to use your skills, you got to click on them, and what skill you're using will be listed here. This is Dragon's Breath. It is a Promethean Magic Starter spell, and you just do that. And it sends a wave that burns an area, which... Yeah, okay, so it is spaced. It uh, counts as a turn without you actually having to move. There are some options. Uh... No... Ah, configure auto loot. What is this? Okay, yeah, you configure auto loot. Uh, there you go. Auto loot. Uh, use auto loot. Which is, uh, if you walk over the th items with that tick mark, you will automatically pick it up. Like such. And it will go into your inventory. Otherwise, you would have to manually click on the item. Like, uh, shit. Whatever. I guess I messed it up. Then you have this, which is FUD. Your FUD vendor. And if you have a uh, burglary, you'll steal something from it each time you go into it. This is stuff that will give you health back if you do not have vampirism, amongst other things. And then you have the drink vendor. Because I stole something, apparently. These are drinks. I'm not exactly sure what drinks do, but I imagine they probably fill mana. Alright. Now, moving around will refill your health and mana over time. And But since I have Blood Mage, that means whenever I kill something... Let's see if we can find ourselves an enemy. Nothing. As I said, uh, as I said, with Burglary, you can pick these open, but generally the first level you don't even need it to do. But it does give you XP when you do it. So there's re no re reason not to. These are ranged weapons, I believe. I'm trying to find an enemy to generate to show you some skills. Alright, that's an enemy. That's a gnome. So, in order to attack, it's pretty typical. With a ranged thing, you just click the area you want to attack, and it will do such. But if you want to do melee, and I, I realize you can't really see right there, just walk into the thing, and you click the arrow key at it. And as such, or WASD if that's what you're using, and you'll punch it. Or if you have a sword, you'll slice it, you have an axe, you'll crush it, what have you. Alright, there's a whole lot of shit in here. So, we're gonna try to burn that bat. And this spell, what it does is, as you can see, not only does it hit him on the way out, but it drops that thing on the ground, which does damage as they go through. So it's a pretty straightforward spell. It's it's a pretty optimal build, but as I said, you're going to be relying on magic. Now, this is perception that allows you to see traps. You can still see them, but you wouldn't see the sparkles, if I recall. I'm not a 100% on this, but you can click on traps and try to disarm them. Sometimes it fails, and you'll still get hit by the trap. It's pretty straightforward. That was a teleport. That was probably bad at me. Alright. And that's pretty much Dungeons of Dreadmore, right there, uh, in a nutshell. I'm going to try to get some EXP for you guys, so you can... Ooh, I got hit by a tree. What is that? The Baron is going to make sure you have a good time, whether you like it or not. This monster is trying to kill you. I've never seen that before. I'm pretty sure he's going to fuck me up. So... Uh, you need more mana. Drink more booze. I apparently need 
more mana, so I should probably drink more booze. Pretty sure that guy's going to kill me, so. What the? You need more mana! Let's just melee him. We're about to die. I'm pretty sure of this, so. Yeah, we're about to die. Uh, well, I guess you get to see that. <laughs> Your life force is so, running out. We died. Um, alright. Uh, he diggled like an elder sign killed by the Baron on level 1. I have never run into him before. I don't know who the fuck that is. Obviously, you can see I've got a bunch of stuff going on here from trying to play. Okay, uh, let's, let's do that again. Let's, that was embarrassing. Let's just go right back in and... Uh, well, we'll do this, because it really doesn't matter for showing purposes. I would like to show you the level up screen and how that works. So we're gonna, let's see, let's uh, let's put that staff on. How embarrassing. How embarrassing. It's the same for objects that are breakable, like such. You walk right into them and you'll break them open if they are breakable, otherwise you'll do that. And such. There's nothing in there. Uh, all the maps are randomly generated when you appear into them, such as to be expected from a game of this type. Uh, you can kill those guys by throwing the fire in there. Apparently they are much stronger than I expected them to be. Okay, and it's almost dead. Gained a, I believe this is your EXP, yeah. That's how much you need to level up right there, so we're gonna try to kill this guy. How much fire does that take? Negative seven. I mean, how much mana does it take? You need more mana! Oh, I forgot I can just hit space bar. Alright, so that guy's dead. Holy shit. You need more mana! Drink more booze! They're gonna follow you. But like I said, depending on the ca character type you are, it may be easier just to smack them around. I do have a staff. Though, as I am squishy and I have no defense abilities, that means more than likely the Dickles are going to kill me. You so, need more mana! Like I said, you gain food to heal, so, uh. Just use that. Come on, level ups. Come on. Uh, well, hit C. I can explain stats. Uh, okay, as you level up certain skills, your warrior, wizard, and rogue... Uh, tick marks? Is that what you're kind of... We'll level up. You do have equipment. As you can see, there's quite a bit. You've got your weapons, your gloves, your necklaces, helmets, belts, and leggings, and all that jazz. These are all your things right here. Uh, you can hover over each of them, and they'll tell you generally what you're going to do. Melee power, for example, effects here. Uh, how hard you hit with your weapons, trap site radius is how far you can see traps like this, uh, which are directly enhanced by skills such as uh, perception. If you hover over this, it'll show you like trap site and some other stuff right there. So raising certain skills will take you to give you certain benefits. Like all these things, notice they give like better mana and better magical power. That's generally what you want. You've got sagacity, 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 whatever you want to call it, which is generally your ability to do magical damage. Magic power affects the uh, power of your spells, yada yada. So this is generally how you do it. And of course, you've got your health regeneration and mana regeneration. So it's pretty straightforward with the character select screen, or not character select, your status select. Let's go ahead and use that stone axe. Yeah, yeah, why not? What are we looking at? Ooh. Uh, sure. Sometimes these will kill you. So, you gotta watch out. That guy's dead. I believe there is a... big hole right there, so... Eat food to Okay, I almost died. That's not cool. Let's, uh... Drink some mana, and uh, drink some health, yeah. Let's do that, and as you see, eating food 
in, uh, increases uh, your health regeneration and credit. So if we did there, we go, there's a level up. All right, now when you level up, you're brought to the screen. As I see, you get your experience. Experience is cumulative, so it doesn't like go back to zero and then you have to gain this amount. Now you just need to now gain this. All right, the way it works, in order to get different skills in each skill bar that you already have, you need to learn the previous skill. Luckily, whatever you start with, you're going to have the first thing up. And depending on what you choose, they're all going to be different and they're all going to be useful. Some skills have useless things, i.e. Lucky pick for burglary. Locked doors pose no opinion to your... Uh, impediment to your lucky pick it pretty much means you can now unlock all doors no matter what so generally if you have burglary unless you really absolutely must have all this other stuff you really just put it to rank two and there's no reason to do anything else with it perception is pretty good um as you can see you get more uh trap radius and some other stuff i'm not sure what those are because you very well especially traps and other things that would do you harm also loot it generally having higher ranks in this allows you to see more of the map and, and better loots and stuff and more creatures and invisible things and such it's pretty much all around useful and of course laser, laser eyes but that has a cooldown i don't particularly like laser eyes but hey to he is home okay this allows you line walk you have the ability to trap uh the invisible strands of the power which bind the world and actually to increase mana regeneration or grants a chance to regain mana when casting spells this will allow you to use this with a cooldown or refills your mana then of course there's this which just increases passives and all that shit so depending on what abilities you choose this you gain the rune of exploding which is generally considered to be an incredibly powerful ability for its mana cost um, promethean magic is the the uber magic abilities there's some other magic you have uh, viking magic i believe and like uh techno magic i'm not entirely sure if that's a thing but i know that this is the one that wrecks shit and of course you've got artful dodger aikido for adventures you've read an article that uh blah 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 adventure monthly about this now let's see if it works theoretically turns a dodge into a counter tank sometimes i.e whenever you dodge you have a chance of counter attacking uh, but of course you still have to be immediately ranged and you've got your blood magic which is a uh, Use the Dark Art of Vital Sucking Names your melee attacks to have a chance to drain the vital energies of your enemies and transfer them to yourself. That allows you to melee hit and drain mana. Yeah, so, how you build your characters up to you. I can't really say there is a best and worst build, but there are definitely skills that help other skills, and there are skills that don't help. I ate Promethean Magic, generally, if you wanted to get this. Let's do that, for example, and then let's do it. Uh, I already refilled because I leveled up. Let's uh, just spam some magic. Oh shit, I hope I don't hit that guy. So I can generally show you. Alright, now if we use this, it has a cooldown, which is turn-based, but as you can see, it heavily increased your mana regen, which is what it does. So It's generally a good skill to have. Um, cooldown's not too bad. And as I said, every step you take and or clear the spacebar counts as a turn. So it's pretty straightforward. As I said, your character stuff here, this will tell you what type of damage you're doing with your melee, and if you have a ranged attack, what you're doing there. You have a whole bunch of different stats. And I will be straight out and say that this game is all about the lulls. If you come into this trying to take it seriously, you're in for a surprise, because it's hard to do that. Thing. You will pick up quests throughout the game. Sometimes they're based on items you pick up, sometimes they're not. Either way, that's breaching into non-character creation, so we're going to go ahead and cut that short. Now, what do we have here? All right. Okay, by clicking that, it appears that that enhances the... S don't know why I would want it to be that big. As I said, as you can see, it's clearly got some stuff cut off. But that's because you can go 14, 40, 900, and um, I'm actually have recording it in uh, 128720 p for the sake of YouTube. But you have your full... Uh, so your full resolutions and stuff like that. So when you're in higher resolutions, this is better, obviously. But as of right now, we don't need that. That about covers it for Dungeons of Dreadmore. As I said, the game is fairly difficult. As you can see, I got fucked the first time I hopped in. Uh, other than that, it's incredibly fun. I definitely recommend it. And you should definitely buy it. Uh, support the company. And as always, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe below. Or not, it's up to you. Peace.